Well, if it hadn't taken me three hours to get here from Santa Clarita, I wouldn't have to follow Alex. <laughs> but I'll do my best. So I would like to talk about three things. And I'm going to tell you the, these things by telling a few stories. Um, the three things I want to talk about are slowing it down, self-awareness, and safety. And um, it was mentioned that I have a son, Tom, who's 30. He has autism. He went to Cal State Northridge after uh, three years at College of the Canyons. And he graduated from CSUN with a degree in accounting and passed the California exam for uh, Board of Accountancy. So that was a lot of work for both of us. And I learned a lot along the way. I also teach at CSUN. I teach teachers how to work with students on the autism spectrum. And I had students with autism in my class, so I have that perspective. And um, I also worked as an advocate for 10 years for 300 families. And so I have a lot of experience with the needs of different families. I see many of you here that I know who I've helped. And your kids were three. And now look, you guys are good. They're ready for college. So it's quite amazing. But the first S I want to start with is slow down. And I'll start with the story of Joseph, a young guy on the spectrum, very smart. He was determined to get out of uh, high school in four years and go to college because that's what he wanted to do. Well, he was at school for about a month, and his mom called to check in on him and said, how are you doing? And he was explaining a few things, how he goes to the gym a couple days a week. And she said, well, um, what are the bathroom arrangements like? And she, he said, well, I don't know because I haven't taken a shower yet. And she says, what do you mean you haven't taken a shower yet? And he said, well, nobody told me I stink. So at home, the routine was the mom would smell, he hadn't had a shower in a couple days, she would say, you stink, go take a shower, and he would go take a shower, and that was his hygiene routine, is waiting for someone to tell him that he stinks. But at college, he did shower twice a week in the gym, because that was a rule, after you work out, you shower, so he knew what that shower looked like, but he didn't know what the dorm shower looked like, because he hadn't been there. And my point about slow it down is that when our young people have a developmental disability, their calendar age is one thing, but their developmental age is another. And they need more time to prepare for to be 18 or to be 21. So my idea is that if you're, you've got a bright son or daughter on the spectrum who's getting ready to go to college, but maybe they're not really ready and what they, the biggest gift you could give them is more time. As an advocate, I found out there's two tracks in high school, the diploma track and the non-diploma track. If your kid is fast-tracked on the diploma track, they will not be allowed to have transition services like organizational skills, career development. They won't get the other ex the experiences that other people are getting who have a disability but aren't on the diploma track. So as an advocate, I advocate for taking people off the diploma track give them a fifth year of high school, and then put them back on the diploma track. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> so that's one thing, you know, the gift of time is something that is immeasurable and uh, could be a great, it's something to consider. You might get a lot of resistance from everybody about it, but what's better, taking more time to prepare or arriving unprepared? You know, Joseph struggled, you know, he's just one example of someone who wasn't ready to even be away from his mother and you think, oh, you get the opportunity to do these things and you learn, but not necessarily. People with autism don't necessarily learn by osmosis, so just by being there and watching and copying others, they weren't doing it in preschool, why do we think they're suddenly going to do it in college? So that was slowed down. The, and related to this ex experience, my son Tom once said to me, Mom, if it hasn't happened to me, my mind is a blank page. So when we when we have to consider that maybe our young people don't know what colleges are going to be like or what job they want to do and all these things, and they can't imagine it. What they need to do is see it. So we need to provide experiences for them, um, um, job shadowing, visiting a whole lot of places. Um, my, my daughter Lisa used to be um, an advisor at, at college, and she had a double room, but she had visitors to spend the whole weekend in her dorm and get, get to try it out. Our people need to try things to know what they like and don't like, and they can't just guess or imagine. 
as well as someone else might be able to. So we need to find as many opportunities as we can so that they can fill in those blanks and really have a good idea of what they're in for. The next is self-awareness. And when Tom was graduating from high school, they said to him, remember, Tom, the three most important things for the rest of your life are self-awareness, self-advocacy, and self-disclosure. You have to know how your autism affects you, know what your strengths and weaknesses are, and be able to ask for help. And I said, not to be a smart ass or anything, but I said, well, if this is the most important thing, why are you mentioning it for the first time now? Because <laughs> have, has no one ever noticed we need a little more time to get things done around here? But it happened to be true. And Tom did need to get on the fast track to learn these things. And um, some, so we have to think of ourselves and our parenting. Are we keeping a secret from their chi our child about their autism? Mm. Are we really letting them know about both their strengths and their weaknesses? Tom once said to me, Mom, I have to be perfect. I said, no, you don't. Why do you think you have to be perfect? He said, because you're perfect. I said, I am not perfect. He says, well, if you have any problems, you never talk about them. I'm like, oh, he has a point there. So every time I was thinking through solutions and weighing my options and thinking about how my choices would affect other people, I was doing that here instead of here. So I began to narrate my thought process, let him know what my weaknesses are, what, how, when I need help, and I just made a, a conscious effort to show that we all have strengths and weaknesses and it's nothing to be ashamed of and it's reasonable to ask for help and then teach ways to do that. But how do we expect our young people to be able to do that if we haven't worked on it? And that's a, a scary thought. Um, a very wise man with autism who can't speak, but he can type. He said, I could not accept my autism until I knew that my parents had. And, uh, that's, and, and this happened in his young 20s. And sometimes, you know, we're, we're so careful making sure our kids have good self-esteem and we don't want them to think anything's wrong with them. But are we really being honest enough to say, hey, you're like every other adult with strengths and weaknesses and needs, and I'm okay with who you are. Tom once said to me, Mom, do I have to change to be all right? Do I have to be different than who I am to be accepted? He, he's a smart guy, by the way, have you noticed? The kid knows some, some stuff. But he's able to tell me these really important things. Can I be okay with who I am? Well, yes, but if you're gonna have challenges, you gotta know what to do about them and you need to be able to speak up or have somebody help you write it down and get what you need. And lastly, um, uh, the next one is about the social skills. I was in a swimming pool in Florida with my daughter Lisa at midnight, because you can do that in Florida at certain swimming pools. And this boy swam up to her and said, are you Lisa Island? And she's like, yes I am, how did you know? And he said, well, I read the book Asperger's and Girls. And in the book, Lisa wrote a chapter when she was in high school to explain to girls on the spectrum how to fit in, make friends, deal with bullies. This boy woke, swam up to her and said, I recognize your picture, and let me tell you about your chapter in Asperger's and Girls. He said, none of the guys will have the time of day with, for me because I, I'm too weird for them. But I read your chapter, and I figured out what to do to make friends with girls, and now I have friends who are girls. He says, I let them talk about their periods, and they let me talk about Star Wars. <laughs> but the point is, there is a social hierarchy. There is a system, and it's invisible to many people on the spectrum. And Lisa spelled it out for them uh, from her view as a teenage girl. What are these girls doing? Here, another example is that Tom really wanted to have a girlfriend. And so he went to a club and there was a bunch with Lisa and there was a bunch of girls dancing shoulder to shoulder. They were out on a girl's night out. So Tom put his hands in between and opened up their shoulders because he wanted into the circle, not knowing that shoulder to shoulder means you don't get in the circle. I, I said to Lisa, well, how do you get in the circle? She says, well, you make a rotation around the outside of the circle and if somebody knows you, they'll open your shoulder, their shoulder to you and now you're in. And if nobody opens a circle to you, you have to look at your phone and go, oh my gosh, look at the time, I've got to get to my locker. And you save face for the fact that you were rejected and nobody opened the circle to you. So this is how complex the social world is, and that's just high school. So, um, you know, look for guides and um, 
peer mentors and things like that to help. And then my last, uh, my last closing remark is about safety. And um, I'm with the Autism Society of Los Angeles, and we've, I've personally trained nearly 4,000 LAPD about autism. And one day, one of the PD said to me, well, you know, Emily, I can know all about somebody's autism, but if they reach their hand into their pocket or bag, I have to do to them what I would do to somebody who doesn't have autism. And that was terrifying. You notice how I remember all these things. I'll never forget that, being terrified. So I decided I had been doing many safety projects in Santa Clarita, and I decided to go visit Joey Travolta at Inclusion Films, where he's training young people on the spectrum and with other disabilities for jobs in the movie industry. And I said, Joey, will you help me make a movie about teaching our young people to be safe when they interact with the police, whether it's understanding the uniform, respecting boundaries, understanding their help helping roles, what to do if you get pulled over when you're driving, uh, what to do if you get arrested. Because we all have a fight or flight response to the police, all of us in this room, but we suppress it. And people on the spectrum probably would have a much more difficult time um, suppressing that, and it wouldn't turn out very well. So we made Be Safe the movie. Everybody on the cameras, like 90% of the people behind the scenes are on the spectrum and other disabilities. All of the actors but one have autism and other disabilities, and the police are real police. So it's very realistic, and then I, you know, I, I, I remember what people say to me, and I could hear my teachers in my class at CSUN saying, Emily, we like your movie, but we want more. So I wrote a 300-page curriculum to go along with it of all differentiated materials, visual support, social stories for the police, uh, a photo essay on safety and boundaries, um, uh, respecting boundaries, and um, so I do have these with me, and our I hope you'll like us on Facebook. We're trying to get the word out about this. It's so important, we all know it is, and this is a video modeling curriculum, which is evidence-based best practice for our population. So it's pretty exciting stuff, and um, I hope it'll be helpful to you because everything we do for our young people can all be undone in one moment if they're not safe, and that's a risk that we're not prepared to take. Thank you.